pretending that it'll be the two of us here from the council. Three. 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 Okay. Three of us. I'm sorry. Uh, miss you. And uh, I was thinking that we were going to have a president. And I guess I should start if it's all right with the other council people, unless you want to say. <coughs> The notice requirements provided for the open for the open public meeting law has been satisfied. Notices was properly given, said notice having been transmitted to the Carrier News and the Star Ledger on Tuesday, April 8, 2014, as well as being posted on a bulletin board at City Hall. And just for the uh, role, we have Ms. Greaves, Bill Greaves, yeah. Council Lady from the Post War. We have Ms. Rebecca Williams, she's the at large Council Lady for the Second and Third War. And myself, uh, I am the Councilman for the First War. And at December 31st, Soon to be just a regular citizen. Over there. This the evening. This evening, the Plainfield Municipal Council will conduct budget hearings on the 2014 calendar year municipal operating budget. This session is scheduled from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Two hours, inclusive of the discussion of the administration and finance the Health Division, and Purchasing. Uh, I guess I should read number three. It says public comment during this portion of the agenda must be limited to, I guess this is the end of the, after we have the hearings. So, Administration and Finance, uh, I introduce Mr. Smiley, who is our business administrator. And you take it from there. Thank you, Councilman. Tonight, uh, the administration will be presenting public uh, administration and finance under the direction of Ron West. Uh, present tonight for, for uh, purchasing and uh, health. Uh, sitting with us is also Al Steinberg, the CFO for the city of Plainfield, and our purchasing agent, Cindy Weather. Thank you. Mr. West is going to open up the, the discussion with the council and then we'll proceed from the, uh, from the uh, budget. Uh, you may want to also introduce, uh, because you've had our council join us this evening and your advisor for that and I'm sure some of the folks here have. Yes, we have our esteemed cooperation council. Thank you. David Machado, would you like to say a word before we get started? No, that's it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. Any advice? I'm sorry. Yes. My name is Larry Caracelli, and uh, I'm with Government Strategies Group uh, on contract to the council to assist in the uh, review of the budget. Now, we normally call them budget consultants. <laughs> so, go ahead. Before I begin, I'd like to do as I did last evening and defer to the CFO first. We'll, we'll start with some opening remarks. And again, that's Al Steinberg. I'd like to start just by reiterating what I said last night with uh, the city having an opportunity to invest in itself and the the collection of tax is primarily the, the reason for that last year. I think there might have been some confusion as to uh, what my stance was concerning tax collections from the comments that were made last night. Um, personally, I don't like to pay taxes. I'm not an advocate for raising taxes. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but I will say that it is a primary tool in municipal budgeting in supporting the budget in a budget that's some 75 million dollars we have a tax levy of over 50 million dollars 
there is a component that I don't believe is in this workbook that I think that you, you guys got. That. That's called the Reserve Fund Collected Taxes. And if you're familiar with private accounting, it's, it's very much similar to the Reserve for Bad Debts. Okay, we don't collect 100% of our taxes. So we have to fa factor in a portion that isn't collectible. So basically, the, port, the people that do pay their taxes are paying for the people that don't pay their taxes in a, in a collective way. When the collection rate goes up, your ability to reduce that reserve goes down. So <coughs> that being said, the collection for 2013 for the city of Plainfield for up some $2 million. <coughs> okay, that provided additional surplus to be used in this budget should the budget be adopted as introduced, which allows the city the opportunity at this point to co at least contemplate the idea behind this budget, which is economic redevelopment and an investment in human resources and positions that are designed to yield a benefit to change some of the gradable loss and negative trends that have affected the city for the last decade. The decision is up to the elected officials, but I believe that's the design of the budget that's in front of you and what's being contemplated tonight. We'd be happy to answer any, any questions having to do with uh, the budget outside of the departments if you have any questions. I think that uh, a lot of comments that I made regarding what you had said, it didn't seem like it gave the full analysis. What kind of the reserve for taxes is a estimated number based upon people that you anticipate will not pay that taxes within that budget period. Well, generally it's based on the collection rate from the prior year. Yes, that's right. Collection rate. Right. Okay? And you say, all right, we're going to have the same collection rate or greater. So you make a reserve, which is a proper way to do it. I'm not criticizing that. But they are not paying for people that don't pay their taxes. They are paying taxes run to the property. If it's sold or recaptured or a lien is on it, that money still is owed to the city. We just don't have it in cash. And I think that I'd like to just make that point, and I think I'm correct. Am I not? You're not totally. What, what we're doing, let's say we have a 96% budget. Yes. Okay. Our budget then is based on the collection of 96% of our taxes. That's right. So last year, what happened was you had that that premise going into last year. Yeah. But your collection rate went up. Yeah. Because the tax collector did a pretty good job. So, so what happened was you got additional tax money in, which gave you additional surplus, mm -hmm. which allows you now to use the option of using that surplus in the budget. Well, yeah, to, to offset some of the costs yeah. of the, the salaries. Yeah. The benefit of the salaries and, and those positions, should you put them in the budget, is something that you have to determine. It, is that you had some very good questions last night. What is the time frame? What are the expected results? That's I'm right. not arguing that. I'm yes, just saying, I understand that. I'm just saying, saying that this is the premise of this budget, as I understand it, that these added positions are going to yield a benefit to the city to be able to turn around some of the trends that have negatively affected for the last decade. Yeah. That the ability to do that is primarily based on the additional surplus that was realized by the city through the increased collection of taxes last year. That's I all. I understand what you're saying and all I'm saying is I think sometime we who are not money inclined to be have good bank accounts and have relatives that wasn't placed in this very nice financial position and that own houses here in Plainfield and it moved here 
in the 60s and the 70s need to be considered to not increase their taxes. And as long as I'm sitting here, I'm going to ask you the same type of questions and to have you justify the fact. Why do we need all of a sudden something that was fought against for years? by the very person that we have sitting in this wonderful seat in there that's supposed to guide us, that's working with us, hopefully, to make Plain feel better. All of a sudden, now we're going to hire all these extra people. What is it, nine hundred and some thousand dollars worth? And I just don't see the results of it, and I haven't heard what the results will be. That's my problem. And I will fight to keep the taxes and to keep the same thing. If he's a part-time man, we had part-time man as long as I can remember. Councilman, I, I can't, I'm not here to uh, defend the past or the practices of uh, the officials or how they interact or, or anything more. All I'm saying is this budget is for the city. Yes. Of Plainfield. Yes. It's not designed to represent a particular group of the population it's for the entire city. I understand that. And we're going to move on. One dollar on the property tax bill of the residents of Plainfield. The council would have to cut out over $11,000 out of the budget. So a $50,000 decrease comes out to about $4. So if you consider that that's $4 a year, all right, so you know, you're talking less than a dollar a month. So just well, I hope we're not going to cut eleven thousand out of this budget. No, no, but I'm just saying, I'm just saying it from from a perspective. Yeah, you know, no, I understand you know. what you're saying. And before we make a final thing, we have a budget consultant here who's done many, many budgets. They would tell us if you're going in the right direction. We have an attorney here. Hopefully, he's at our meetings all the time. He's sort of keep us straight on some of the things that we can do. We have you who is a CFO, understand all of the mechanisms that you have to go through down the state and keep a budget running. So I don't think we're going to make a big, big mistake. Hopefully not. Okay? I'd like, to, I'd like to make a comment as well. Yes, go ahead. Um, what you, well, question and a comment. What was the um, tax, what was the increase, what did the increase come out to last year? As far as dollars? Or as, as far as dollars. Um, at roughly $2 million. No, I meant um, per household, you know, on the assessment. $166.06, I think. $166.06. Right. And yeah. you said $6? Six cents? Yes, I believe it's six so cents. So divided by 12, so we're talking about roughly a million um, with about $14 a month. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, what is the rate this year? What would it be this year with the introduced budget? I think it was like the introduced budget. It was one hundred twenty-nine dollars. What I'm going to in thirty-seven cents. And what I'm going to give you tonight is we came forward with some amendments last night, and yes. you weren't here to get it. Right. So we're down to one hundred and one dollars and ninety-six cents. So one hundred and one dollars and ninety-six cents divided by twelve. Equals, equals about eight dollars and fifty cents per month. Per month. Dollar ninety six per week. A dollar ninety six. So, <laughs> so, so this budget actually the increases less for the homeowner than correct. what we did last year. That is correct. Okay. So eight dollars and fifty cents a month. That's correct. Well, Two dollars a week. That is what we are asking citizens of this fair city to invest in, in their city. And what I'd like to do, though, before beginning, you know, I do want to make sure that those of you who didn't get a copy of the budget, budget amendments, and there are two or three at this table. <laughs> yeah, that, but that's the amendment. There was also a question from the Citizens Budget Advisory Group with regard to fees and, you know, grants. What we're going to give you is a, a perfect world in terms of identifying the breakdown between fees and grants. What it will do for you, though, is give you a good sense of the revenue we collect. You know, and uh, the trust account, you can believe, was money that came in for special purposes. You know, and... Well, they got them last night. <laughs> yeah. So when you get a chance, we'll pass those out too. 
you know, and then that's the recreation, and the division analysis in terms of fees. Would you, uh, please, Ron, give an explanation of this projection that you did last week, at least so that the audience can make a decision some of what we're talking about? Sir. We have, what we did last night was come forward with $142,000 in, in increases, you know, for recreation, uh, for uniforms, park maintenance, play, playground equipment repairs, additional money for engineering because we've got uh, DEP citations for two sites in town, you know, the Mass Avenue parking lot and we've got one other location that's been uh, questioned by DEP, so we've got to go in and do some testing to see whether or not we have environmental issues. The other thing that we're doing is introducing a, a new bank for our merchant fees, which is really the credit card world. And we've got to pay that, that provider, you know, for the fees associated with the credit card transaction, so we asked for $10,000 for that. In addition, we had decreases in our pension payment obligations, both for the police and fire budget, as well as uh, the general administration budgets, you know, to the tune of around $433,000. So the net is, with the offsets for the requested amendments uh, for increases, is $289,898 as a reduction. Hey, I just have one question. Yes. Would you explain why you think the uh Decreases at four hundred thousand from the. Oh, I can answer that one. Stock market's done well for the last five years. Okay. And therefore, as a result of the stock market going up, most companies, most cities, have had the luxury of, of seeing their returns go up, and therefore they don't have a need to raise as much money internally to meet their obligations going Thank forward. Thank you. That's good. Now, I will also apologize in advance for those of you who were here last night because I did talk about purchasing. I will be repeating that. And with regard to purchasing, we have three people in the organization. The, the budget is basically flat, 2014 versus 2013. The budget is coming in at the salaries at $187,695. Last year was $186,968.74. Other expenses in 2013 was $1,714.25. It's going up to $1,845 this year. When you look at what was done in 2013 in the organization, we basically managed five bids, 38 RFPs, and there were over 6,500 purchase orders. We reduced turnaround time, or they reduced it since we weren't here, but I, you know, as, as a part of the system, you know, it, it was reduced from 12 days to 7 days. The expectation going forward is that we continue to turn that around. Good. You know, uh, we collected business regi registration certificates for all of the playing field vendors. Anybody we do business with is supposed to have a certificate on file. We haven't been the best at that. And that's the issue back home with the certificate. They get it uh, from the state. The state of New Jersey. Is that like a license for business? Yes. Okay, thank you. We uh, had the asset uh, inventory conducted for the city. That's usually something that's required frequently by the auditors as well. So every asset, whether it's a building, a truck, a piece of uh, computer equipment, you know, was a part of this inventory. And so we've got that on file now and uh, on DVD and every other way known to man in terms of uh, being able to express what was done. Those dollars were given a value and now will be reflected when the auditors come in to do the review of 2013. May I just make one question, uh, just one comment. We had some audit findings against purchasing previously. Were they addressed last year or they still exist or we plan to eliminate them? <clears throat> the CFO is looking at me, so I will tell you it is our intent to get rid of all 22 audit findings and they were beyond purchasing so it's, okay, we're, so we're attacking all of the audit findings. 
purchasing wasn't included in the audit findings last year, you're saying? No, there, there were some that were related to purchasing. We are tackling those as well, which is why, for those of you who weren't there last night, we talked yeah. about the Edmonds training and the documentation associated with purchase orders, business registration certificates, all of those activities are associated with getting rid of audit funds. Great. Now, I can't address whether or not they're going to find anything for 2013. Yeah, I understand that. I can yeah. tell you if they catch us in 2014, we're not going to be happy at this end of the day. Mr. Chairman, if I may, yeah. one of the main, I think one of the audit funds you're referring to is individual departments not going from purchasing yes. in order to uh, in order to buy goods and services. And that is something that has been addressed uh, within the new year. Good. Thank you. You may proceed, sir. All right. Uh, Verizon Wireless and Verizon were two companies that we owed a fair amount of money. So at this point in time, we believe that we have satisfied to the tune of $300,000 or thereabouts all of those issues. You know, uh, now we're moving forward to meeting with them to figure out whether or not we can eliminate some of the services we currently pay for, particularly those that aren't in use today. You know, Verizon right? should be able to tell you that if it's it, it related to telephone and stuff, correct? That's, that's correct, uh, but we've got a few groups that we're meeting with to help us do that. Uh, okay. So we're looking at it from a bunch of different uh, vantage points with the intent being to make sure that before we say disconnect, it's not your phone line or somebody else's. I understand. Yeah, so that, that's something we will be doing. Good. Yeah, I was just talking about central purchasing, and I'll cover that in a second when we talk about eMix. What I spoke about last night is that last year there was an, an agreement uh, approved by council to go out and auction off for uh, distribution of electricity. And uh, the benefit of that has been uh, through the first three months of this year, we are saving in excess of $11,000. The projection is we're going to save $45,000 by this year. If any of you want to ask whether or not we're going to do it with gas, the answer is not no time soon. You know, gas is a problem. The, the marketplace is far too volatile. So our auction company is certainly telling us now is not the time to do gas. And for those of you who have done it on your own, you probably found out the hard way. That yeah, when you say gas, you mean gasoline or no? no. Gas as in if you use liquid, 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 liquid natural gas. gas. Thank you. In your home. You know, uh, again, I mentioned that we're looking to further improve purchase order turnaround time. We're going to be revising the manual so it reflects the techno technological side of it so that everything matches. You know, we're also going to make sure that we improve the user perception of their experience with, uh, with purchasing so that anybody that goes there you know, gets treated or, or feels that they've been treated with kick gloves. No, Similar to the comments we had from the attorney regarding our clerk's office, you said. Customer service is important. Yeah. Not at this time. This no questions. Okay. Does anyone sitting to our right, as our advisors, have any questions of the purchasing that you'd like to see clarified? Sure. Um, no questions, but a comment. Um, a lot of the agencies provide write-ups uh, explaining their previous, previous year's accomplishments, their future goals, which helps us digest the information. I know Mr. West gave us a very nice synopsis, but you know, hearing it versus reading it and being able to digest it early on and afterwards is helpful. So, uh, you know, my suggestion would be, you know, moving forward, that a write-up be attached to the budget. That way, we can review. Um, What's going on? No, and I, I do have them. The reason that, well, you have it for some of them. Right. The issue is the timing wasn't right, and nor was was each organization consistent with its approach, as well as its recognition of what is an, a goal and objective. So part of what we need to do going forward is deal with something called the SMART principle, where everything is specific and measurable. And so that's a, a work in process. You know, but we will certainly do that going forward because we want to make sure that we are accountable to the public with regard to what it is that we're doing. In fact, we hope to be proud of what we said we've accomplished. Anyone else over there? Any questions? Uh, I'd like to see some numbers.
but you have to pull them out of the air, is to compare it to last year purchases to this year purchases on items do we save or we have to increase and how it affect. Then you can do it in very general, I would suggest, uh, to let us know if we are saving or if we are how much percentage we're going up in the equipment we have. That, of course, will reflect the budget as well. But no, proceed on. We can when, do when that, but just know second. when we're using state-approved vendors and all, uh, it's, you know, it's an extra step, which we would be more than glad to do because we'll have to look at what somebody else's prices are. You know, no, 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 no. If you buy pencils, last year you paid two cents a piece, and this year you paid one and a half, so you saved a half cent. Just a general idea, if we are saving money under the system we are, or if it's increasing, we would have a feel for it. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> no big deal, incidentally. So we spend a lot of time on that. Okay. Go ahead. You got the floor. All right. Uh, now we're going to cover health, and I'm going to cover health in two different perspectives. Health and WIC, which, is, which reports to health, but it's a somewhat separate uh, entity. We have 10 budgeted positions in health, <coughs> which includes vital statistics, it's got animal control, it's got you know, retail food inspections as a, as a part of that makeup. The salary proposed is $545,109 over $387,312.13. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that there was no health officer and uh, two inspector positions not filled. And these are part-time inspector positions, but we were understaffed in, in the health division in 2013, and I'll go over some of the things that occurred as a result of that. And not just during 2013, but even before. Would you tell us again what the health department is responsible for, doing, please? Health department has retail food establishment inspections that they're responsible for. Uh, lead, lead issues, whether it's lead abatement or anything else, they have to get out in the field for. If there are inspections uh, required due to pests or anything else, they go out and look. They have to inspect schools. You know, around safety or whether uh, buses and vans are on the, on the curb with the engines running. Those are all things they're not supposed to do. They're supposed to be promoting health in the community. The, the health office is supposed to be the leading office for advocating and tackling our issues around obesity, diabetes, hypertension. You know, we're supposed to play a significant role. We have a function there with regard to, to communicable diseases. Tuberculosis, uh, those other things that people get for bad habits. Uh, you know, we, we, that individual is sitting here, and I'm going to point her out, because uh, she has to stay on top of communicable diseases. We have vital statistics, marriage, uh, birth and death certificates uh, are all handled out of that. I would hope that we had things like dogs and cat licenses, but I'll cover that in a second. Yeah. Is, is, that, is WIC under that? We're, we're going to cover separate, but, yeah. I'll, but, I'll, but I'll tell you yeah, what WIC does. We'll get that piece out of the way. WIC, WIC, WIC is uh, providing uh, nutritional food and counseling to over 4,500 you know, households, and I would say to the tune of almost 50,000 visits on an annual basis. This is Prima Chara. She runs the WIC program. Uh, All right. But I'll, I'll get into more detail on with the way you do it. I, I like it. Go ahead. <laughs> on the weak side, other expenses are projected to go down. You know, this year, or 2013, was budgeted for $66,386.85. You know, we're showing that it's going to go down to around $21,000, and we may be off a little since you know, we didn't hire a health officer yet, so we're going to continue with the contract with uh, the county at least another month. Well, so, let me just say this. The contract with the county, the money is not reflected in last year's budget. No, it is, but, but that's why it was $66,000. You know, okay. So I'm saying the other expenses are going down in the projected budget for 2014. Now, I understand that. So you, 
you're saying that, no, go ahead. I, I thought we'd be out of the contract. We're not. So there'll be some, uh, some additional expenses associated. Until you get out of the contract. That is correct. Okay. So the total budget is look, looking like $632,509. You know, which is a 39% increase over, over last year's budget. That's before we add animal control. Animal control is, in 2013, was another $114,000. And there we have a contract with the Associated Humane Society out of Newark. You know, we're projecting that'll go up to $127,000 this year, or 11% increase. Total budget is anticipated to go up 34%. How much of that do we get any grants? Do we get any grants? We get, to offset this? We get about $182,000 in grants uh, in the health division. And I'm talking health, not weight. And well, I should say revenue. You, well, you get that as revenue, but don't we have some grants? Isn't it quick? We, we, get, we get programmatic grants to run things like a, a cancer screening health fair. We may get the grant money from the mammography machine. But how much of that do you reflect in here? Or where is it reflected? As there are, what, what I'm giving you is the budget. This is a, this yeah. is, there are no offsets in there. Okay. But that's what we're going to need to fund the division. You know, any grants we get, again, go toward programs, not toward people. I understand that. All I'm saying, I'd like to know is, are any of the grants we're getting, like a WIG and any other grant from anywhere else, you just recited a couple of, offset this cost in any way to the citizens of Plainfield? Only in WIC. Only in WIC. We'll cover WIC in detail. Okay. You know, okay in WIC, there are substantial grants. Okay. You know, but the health division, no. All right. You know, we do generate revenue there. Is there an opportunity to apply for grants this year? You think the health department in Trenton and Washington? And with with the, the right resources, I'd say absolutely yes. We you say the right resources. We've got to have people who are in a position to go out and go after those grants. Right now, as I indicated, we're understaffed in the health division. And so, so let we're, me just address that to have people. I understand there are grants people out there that set professions. They don't collect from you until you get a grant, which their fee is included in the grant. Is that available in this to let, us? Let, let me make one correction to your statement. Okay. okay. What you cited is illegal in the world of grants. Mm -hmm. I mean, you cannot go out there pay to play. Mm -hmm. You get paid up front regardless of whether we win or lose. Okay. And so we've, been, we've had a number of discussions with those in that business. Yeah, I understand. And we may do that. In fact, we, we did a deal with one on an hourly basis. We're going to wait now and see if we get a recreation grant that was declined last year, this year. So we're, we're testing it, you know, in terms of using outside resources. And the pay for play is what cut that whole system out. When I said pay for play, it's a little different than the political pay for play. What I was saying is, an organization in the grant generation business cannot take money based on their ability to get that grant. They get paid for submitting it, for researching, everything up front. They can't get a piece of the action. And so that's illegal. What I'm saying is, I know they get paid somehow, but if you don't get a grant, that somehow getting paid is, was out in the old days. Uh, but you were saying that's illegal. That's illegal. You know better than I know. That's illegal. All right. We currently have a county health officer providing some administrative services to the tune of eight hours a week. That, that you know, and we pay $55,000 a year for that service. But it's not enough. You know, it's not providing any of the management oversight that we need. You know, we've certainly had some uh, health fairs and other things done, but that person isn't providing supervision. You know, one of the reasons, that one of the things that's happened and why I say that we're understaffed, we've got a total of 330 retail food establishments in the city of Plainfield, of which 106 got their inspections last year. We have 224 locations not getting inspected. 
can that is that an operation that there's an organization that you can hire to do the difference between what you can't do and others that are about the same? I, I am looking to see if there is that sort of organization. There are people we are going to have to tap into, but we only did 30 percent of what was required yeah. last Very year. Important. Okay, and that that that's a problem. <coughs> And I can tell you here to date, we've done 14 inspections. The other thing I can tell you, which is an opportunity and a challenge for all the dogs we have in the city of Plainfield, we have 164 dog licenses. I'm a 164 dog licenses on five. You mean people with dogs, only 164 has a proper license? Yes. And in the city of Plainfield, we only have three cats. <laughs> I've got three. I've got six next door. To me. So we've got an opportunity. I will further say that as of this morning, I was informed that at least 17 households tried to go to South Plainfield to get their rabies you know, uh, Shop. certificates, yeah. shots for their animals. Yeah. And thank goodness, I guess we did this with the city administrator there. You know, all 17 of those households, you know, their information was sent to us. They will be getting letters yes. from us saying that their dogs are not registered with the city of Plainfield. You said they get the rabies shot. Uh, How much do we get for a registration? Uh, uh, what is that fee? It's tw without the rabies shot, I think it's 20 bucks, and 12 20 if it's with the rabies shot. Or somewhere yeah. in yeah. that order of magnitude. Yeah, there's a fee. There's a, definitely a fee. And there's also a penalty. So we are going to be looking, and hopefully the public will find out that we're paying attention to the thousand some odd dogs we probably have in Plainfield, and the likely number of cats, and people need to bring them downtown and register. Sure. You know, so that's an opportunity, but it's something that hasn't been fixed over the years. When I talked about that property management system, one of the modules we're looking at has a health office module to it, so we can send automatic renewals out. You know, because one of the challenges we have across the street is a lack of technology. For anybody that's been to biostatistics, you see all those cardiac systems in there. Yeah. Well, we got to fix that. You know, and I'm not saying it's something simple, but it's something that we need to do because the belief is that you know, more use of technology will provide a better opportunity for us. Yeah. So I have a, I have a question. Yes. Uh, with regard to the uh, vacant in, uh, inspector positions, um, you're hoping that these two um, positions, these two vacant positions, by filling those, this is separate from the uh, health officer. That is um, That those will bring us up to, the, those additional inspectors will, you know, kind of focus a lot of their activity on making sure that our retail establishments are, are up to par. That is correct. Okay. And uh, we'll see if that works, but right now the budget does call for two part-time yeah, and the the inspectors. Uh, we've got one part-timer now, but but again, there's a lot more that goes on in the inspection world than just the retail establishment. So any issue that surfaces, you know, we pull that person from inspections to do something else. Well, all I can say it sounds like you've got a hell of a job to go, and it sounds as if you have looked into it and you know, kind of what you're talking about. And, uh, only one question, the health officer, when we hire them, will probably go up over the county by another half, correct, another 100%. But it'd be worth it because we have, these, have supervision. We can take care of some of these problems without you worrying about all of them. And we will comply with the state requirement. This is a state required position, isn't it? Uh, I don't have uh, much else to add. Uh, okay. Did any of the council present have any questions? Ms. Williams? Ms. Green? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Just um, identify yourself. Uh, and JMS and CVAC. Um, you said you sent 4,000 visits a month. Is that yes. And I was on this last year, and I believe you came up with another like 280 people, individuals were actually served to this program. How many different individuals do you serve? I mean, they, they could come several visits, so that the same person could come several visits. So how many so individuals do you actually serve? On average day, like we see about 50 to 60 people coming yeah, to our office. 50, 60 people a day. 
and, and they don't they come back again how often? See, you know what I'm saying? Do you see the fifty people and individuals about more than that, once? Yes. So that's well, why there are two sets two sites of the program which is operating at the same time. So like fifty to sixty people come here and then one set of people are coming for the follow up three months. Mm -hmm. uh, nutrition education classes and everything and receiving vouchers and the other side is getting enrolled to the program. So the enrollment keeps on both goes simultaneously the same day, Monday to Friday. So 50 to 60 people it could be sometimes 30 and 30 or 40 and 20. So it depends control. upon how many clients are being appointment, given appointment. To do this third because year. last year you told us you serviced about 280 people, individuals. They may have come like 20, 30 times, but that's how many people you actually have in your roles. And that, has that increased? And what do you equate that to, that increase? If it has increased, I don't know. See, it's a families that we are seeing. In a family, that could be like two or three people who are eligible for the program. So we consider it as one family, or we can consider it as three in a family. So it all adds up. Why don't we? We'll get back to you because yeah. the, the, the question is, and we'll look at it, how many unique households or families are there? I would tell you 280 would be low. Well, that's what yeah. we were told last year. That's why we're So to we'll go back and look. And the question is, how many unique households or families do we see? You know, we'll just open up the rolls and just count them. Okay. Well, we're, not we're just doing WIP right now, correct? Because purchasing is question. Lydia? Lydia? Oh. Can I ask a question? Yes, ma'am. Lydia Jones, how long does a client stay on with usually? How how long from start <coughs> to finish are they on WIC? Uh, if they are new people, yes, they they stay in our office around maybe one hour to two hours. No, no. no, 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 no. In the program. Oh, in the program. Oh, yes. okay. Uh, as I said, it's a women, infant, and children program. So children from the birth to five years of age, they can stay in the program. And uh, women, if we service pregnant women, and then they, as soon as they get, they enroll in the program, if they're in the first trimester, until they have the baby, they can be in the program. Once they deliver, they can still be on the program if they choose to breastfeed the baby, they can still be on the program for a year. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, I just had a question about health. Um, maybe you answered this before, but could you explain the public health agreement that um, from the budget that went to twenty-five thousand dollars, and last last year it was only it was less than three thousand dollars? And could you explain the uh, outside consulting services uh, what that entails and, and why that's needed if we're if we're high additional people? The, the agreement that we have with the county is $55,000 a year. You know, and that's for the public health officer. You know, that, that goes away. That's all it is. Yeah, that would be other expense. Yeah. be in that and the reason it's going up that would that's the public health uh, that's the agreement with the uh, county to provide the public health uh, officer eight hours a, a week we're projecting that that was going to go away that's why the budget is down in 2014 and the outside consulting services no that is the outside wait so that, I've no. seen outside cons consulting services on line four and then line uh, Seven public health agreements. Oh, I have, I have to investigate that because I'm not sure what the public health agreement is. Okay. All right. So we'll get back to you on that one. If it's something we can cut out and get off the taxpayers, I'd appreciate it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, look, but if it says agreement, um, <laughs> yeah, I understand. Go ahead. <laughs> I actually have some questions about health. If I can. Go ahead, please. Um, you talked about customer service, and I was uh, having some people talk to me about vital statistics having some issues, and have you 
been able to address the customer service portion of vital issues. Uh, did I have statistics? No, no, I heard what you said. Uh, okay. Let me go to my page. Uh, I don't think I covered that point. Uh, I think I stopped before then. I'm not what, what, I, what I have down is that customer service must improve. Okay. And it's not just vital statistics. It's, uh, well, this is the personal experience. This is the, the, the whole situation. So it, it's something that we're looking at because those internal and external customers should be treated well. You know, so it's on our list of items. Okay. Um, the other question, I have two more questions. The dog license. I think some of the problem is not because people don't want to get dog licenses. It's not very user friendly in this town to get a dog license. And so, if you can make it online or just do you know, an easier process, it will be. You heard me talk about the RFP. The online piece will, will be this year, but it's going to take a while. And I can tell you, I've got tra training opportunities there. You know, because it's, it's not been a technologically uh, sophisticated group. You know, so we've got work to do, but the intent is to put pretty much all of the city's forms online and find a way to take payment online to improve the experience. And then when people show up, we'll have fewer crowds and the ability to be far more customer service friendly going forward. I think the idea is not to have to show up. That is correct. Okay. It's, it's in the plans, but... Uh, I mean, they do it in other towns and cities in this That's right. But the RFP will small. be going out in short order. Then we've got to implement. Okay. And my last question is, you have one part-time inspector for the restaurants and health issues there. Um, and he's done four, that person has done 14 inspections. I am telling you there have been 14 inspections this year, period. That I didn't say who did. Okay. Yeah, we've got an inspector, full-time, and a part-time inspector. And We've had 14 inspections done this year. That doesn't sound like it's very uh, efficient. Well, unless inspections take it's months and months and months. Depending on the restaurants, each inspection can take huh? a, a day. Mm -hmm. Depending on the, the institution they're going to and what they're looking for, it's not an, an hour exercise. I've already been down the road about why can't you do it in an hour. Mm -hmm. You walk in, you look, no. They're required to go through an extensive checklist. Mm -hmm to make sure that, you know, that, that retail establishment is meeting all code. And then there are at least three levels of uh, establishments. So depending on the risk, you know, whether you're talking about someone that does, that's a, a full-fledged restaurant mm -hmm. versus a small sandwich shop, they get, they get looked at a little differently. And then beyond that, you could have school issues, you could have uh, rodent or pest issues. Any customer complaint that comes in to the health division that's around health, <coughs> that inspector has to go out and look. That's the same person. So depending on what's going on. So your perception of 14 inspections so far this year is Is way too low. No. Hey, you do the math. 14 in three months, how do you get to 330? It doesn't work. See me, I have a couple of places to be shooting. <laughs> now, let me, let me just say, that's so important because I do get complaints about dirtiness, wetness, all of this. Some places do comply, some don't. Please, they should stay call. on that one. They should call the health division and then someone gets dispatched immediately. Even if the, because one of the things that does happen is that that gets communicated to the acting health officer. So she gets that whether she's at the, at the county office or here. And she takes action. She then dispatches it. It's specifically acting faster than only 14 is effective. Uh, just one quick question on the WIC budget. We get a grant of 516000 which covers the salaries. And all we're paying for is 104000 114000 of fringes. Is that, am I in that correct? Uh, no, what I would tell you is the grant of $716,500 is what the award is for this current year. Well, well, part you, of which goes to salary and part that goes to fringe. Oh, okay. So the, the balance, the net of well, what's left is $104,000 that, we, pay. that okay. we pay, which is going to fringe. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? I just from, have, I just yes, have, Joyce, uh, Joyce Wilkerson. 
we talked about mechanization. So once you mechanize, eventually that means that you're going to be able to downsize, correct? Mm -hmm. Because that's the whole point of mechanizing, right? Make it quicker, faster, and if it doesn't reflect at the end of this year, by next year you should be seeing a reduction in the plot. Well, upstairs. I would tell you that the city hall <laughs> is understaffed. You just heard a complaint about customer service. But that you know, goes away when you mechanize. Because yeah, but, but, you know, but, but what I would tell you is the permit process. You know, uh, for buildings and ins building inspections and all, it takes a, lot, a long time compared to some other municipalities. I don't know if the net result is going to be fewer headcount. Yeah. What I can tell you is we first have to improve the way we do business, mm -hmm. and then hopefully that will give us opportunities to shift some resources. So, but when you do an RFP and you have to have a business case and a business plan to show what the value is at the end. So there has to be some values identified that says this is the benefit it's going to bring us as citizens by mechanizing not only the customer service management system. So it's really derived around trying to bring lots of groups together so that we do business bigger, better, faster. Yeah. And so that hopefully will result in it. But the prime driver there is faster response time to our, our client base. You know, you come here for something, you don't have to wait a week, you don't have to wait a month, if you can get it online, the intent is that it gets processed. Online. Oh, no, no. Online. Brian, Brian if I may interject. Well, we got to get there. If I may interject, computerization is supposed to reduce paperwork, it just increases paperwork, in my opinion, and I work with it. <laughs> So your answer is no, you will not see a reduction in staff once we get this whole program running correctly. You'll see a lot of more information that may be vital and readily available, but computers and their mechanisms, I don't think ever reduces the staff. In my opinion, in my experience. So Go ahead, Ron. We understand, and until we do it, yeah. You know, we have to see the outcome. And our, our plan now is to improve the way we do business. And we're fairly lean. You know, one day I'm going to take you on a walk through. This building across the street, I'm lean. You know, there aren't a lot of people. Okay. You know, so we've got to figure out what to do. Let's speed it up a little bit. It's after 8, we got to 9. And I'm, I'm done. I'm just answer your question. question. <laughs> <laughs> Next, if there's, if you hold your question and ask him, right after the meeting, please. Any other questions? Because we need to get through as much of this hearing as we can. We're done. No, we're, we're, we're done. done. We're only doing it. That's all we ever have. Oh, okay. Then you can talk all you want. I want to ask a question. Wait, 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 wait. Excuse me. I mean, I didn't come in yet, but we're still over with the budget advisories. We didn't discuss bilingual daycare. Yes, because it wasn't on the list. All right, uh, you want to discuss it? Well, I just wanted to discuss the difference. We'll discuss it. No, we won't. We won't? We're discuss it right now. All right. Okay. We're only going to discuss the agencies that you want to discuss. No problem. Let me ask you a question on license. If a restaurant comes into the city, you have to give them a license or pay for your Do you do the inspections at that moment that we were talking about that you're not able to do? No. How can you give a license if they don't meet the code requirements? Wait, wait. Which license are we talking about now? The, if I want to open a restaurant, I come to you for a license. It's, it's, the, the building side or the food side? Well, the whole side. Remember, there, there, there are two worlds. <laughs> yeah. So, help. My, my response to no was they can come and pay for a license, and then health may not do the inspection until later. On, on the building side, they can't open until they get a, at least a temporary certificate of occupancy. Okay, so they have to have a, when they get the license to open a restaurant, the building has to be in shape, but the food preparations and all of that, equipment, you may get two months or three months later. Could be. That's correct. Isn't that? Uh, but that's what we have to no fix. Way. I understand. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions for us? If we do have uh, how many minutes? We have? <laughs> you have 45 minutes. I have a general question. Yes, I have a general question. My question is I'm going to pick it back a little bit off the issue. 
point, I think, that she was driving at. And it's about uh, revenues and expenditures. It's about best practices. Across the board with different departments that we're talking about. Uh, my question to you in, in considering and reflection of our, say our last three audits, our last three years, and what our books have been, uh, what our books have looked like, what we have worked with, where we're at, and especially where we're at in so far as taxes are concerned. And what we were talking about the other day with the ratables. Is it is it reasonable and, and is it rational under the circumstances of what we're dealing with, with the revenue that we're dealing with, what we with the resources that we have? to be adding, other than what's required by state law, a top-heavy administration where we were able to operate without these things that we're saying that we need now to brand plain things. We're going to have a meeting for uh, closing out the budget at the end after we hear all the uh, provisions. That's a discussion that is certainly going to take place at the end. Today's, today's focus was going to be help and purchasing. Um, and we're we are going to get to your concerns, Mr. Mahan, because we're going to go through this entire budget. We're going to go through the, the organizations that the city council, the divisions the city council is asking for. And then at the close, the uh, citizen advisory committee, along with the council, as, as they choose, can explore the overall budget and what else do they want to do with it in that final meeting. I mean, we can do it now, but we'll be doing it again later on. We're not making actual cuts at this point. We will be talking about that and the operations. And the finance committee will be meeting with both of you before we even make the cuts. Sure. Okay. So we can report back to the other members of the council what you added, said, and justification. Okay? Uh, are there any other? Did you? You didn't get all your answers. I cut you off. Did you have something else you'd like to say here? No, I was just saying to myself, if the, if we're spending money to computerize and it's not going to help the bottom line, just customer satisfaction, and we're going to have more paperwork, like you said, and it's going to add value. Then we didn't say that. <laughs> we didn't say that at all. I said it's been my experience. That, that, that is not what we said. What we, what we are looking at is we are trying to be business friendly. Everything we're talking about is about investing in playing field, economic development, business friendly, making people want to do business in playing field. We've got to give them a far better experience than what we do today. We even owe it to our staff to give them the right tools to do the jobs that they are required to do better every day. That's the mandate that I'm working on, you know, so that they have the tools to do the right experiences so that some of the, what other towns have, you know, we are best of breed, you know, just like Ms. Muhammad. We want best practices. Everything that we're trying to do is about a best practice. You know, we want to make, we want to make Plainfield the right place. I can tell you right now that developers have not found this to be a very, very business friendly place. You know, you can wait a long time for inspections. You know, or reports. We've got to fix that. You know, when somebody's ready to put millions of dollars in this town, we want to give them welcome arms, which means there's one playing field. All of us are looking for economic development. We are all supportive of those initiatives. And we're not there yet. Not in this room and not outside of this room. Uh, so until we all are marching to the same tune, where we're trying to improve playing field, that's the challenge we have, and that's in everything that we do. In our perception of ourselves, yeah. Thank you. We go to the next item on the agenda so we give the public a little time. Public comments during the portion of the agenda must be limited to matters within the jurisdiction of the city of Plainfield. A total of 60 minutes and how many minutes I have left? <laughs> 40 minutes left, 42 minutes left instead of 60 has been allocated to all public comments that are present. If you wish to be heard, give your name and address to the clerk or uh, to this uh, uh, board here. The amount of discussion on any subject, as will on any amount of time any single speaker is allowed, 
will be limited to five minutes or less if we get redundant. So, Mike is available right here. Okay. Mike is available right here. Have a nice seat. And please, let's not get into old personality things and all of that tonight. Let's okay. get to the subject of what we're trying to do. Are we supposed to limit that to what we're discussing tonight, the health and the yes. purchase? Yes. That's yes. also not It's not the end of the council meeting. <laughs> <laughs> we are the police next. Oh, we got we got one. Yes, sir. You may proceed, Mr. Abdul. Rashid Abdul Haq, uh, 1272 Park. And I'm not going to talk about the other thing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Go ahead. It, it, it's uh, actually um, what he did. He did say something. Um, it's just something I've been asking. I used to ask uh, Director Hellwood. And it's just a simple thing, but then when uh, Mr. West said we want to leave people with a good taste in their mouth, wherever, good. They, wherever they meet us at, yes. in the street, and what some place that people go, uh, they might have to go, they might want to go, it's at the police station. And the reason, not no, that was last week. Would you address well, help the purchasing if you can, please? Well. There would need to be some purchases. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm trying to speak to what he said. He wanted things to be nice wherever people are at. Yes, and, and he was referring to the health and the purchasing and overall and, and restricted to those, if you would. Please. All right. Well, still, at the police station, there needs to be chairs for people to sit in. People go over there and they have to sit there looking at police officers, sitting there looking at them while they wait to be serviced, while someone is coming down, it could be a little old lady and she's sitting there okay. and she Mr. has to stand up. Smiley, we pass that on to the director to see if that can be done. We did that problem. Okay, yes. thank you. First. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Max, please. Thank you, Mr. Hopper. Sure. Because a lot of people assume that because I talk uh, to you in Spanish, I may be little in, uh, in Spanish also. And we have a lot of people in Plainfield uh, that have come recently that they come from uh, different backgrounds. Especially, um, we have people that come for, for a lot of the Indians um, in, in their own countries. They don't speak the Spanish. They only speak dialect. Uh, they, some of them, they don't know how to read and write. So what good it is for you to have 20,000 flyers when they don't even understand how can read? So people in the departments, the health department and all departments, need to be training on the sensitive issues that we face this community. This community is growing. And it's nothing that you can do to stop it. And the Hispanic population is growing in this community. It's nothing that you can do to stop it. But it is something that you can do is um, allow your employees to have sensitive training, to get knowledge on the population, and to reach our, com uh, our community. Um, I have uh, many, uh, well, not many, but I do have experience that they come to different offices. I don't want to put no employees in comments. But come to different offices, and they have an attitude. Mm -hmm. I cannot help you now. I have this, I have that. Mm -hmm. And some people didn't understand what they even said. So it would be very nice that if you have, if you're working in a, in a, in now in the budget, maybe we can put a couple of dollars to get people to be into a sensitive training. But the sensitive training is not to go to schools or a university and hear somebody talk because I can give that sensitive training for free. But a sensitive training should be the knowledge of the community, the average on the on the many organizations that we have here. 
and uh, empowering the people. What is your needs? Do you understand? Do you, can you read the paper that I give you? Or I'm going to give you a paper for you to put in a garbage. What is it that you need? And also, I think that you need to, pro to produce papers in Spanish. All the papers that you can produce or produce in your um, health department office, license um, for every kind. Um, you have applications to acquire a birth certificate. Uh, you have the applications uh, for Mary. You have many things that the health department produce. But one of the things that I'm, I'm making you. Yes. Uh, we I need you. the people to be able to understand our community. That, um, we have taken, they have taken some steps, I know a lot of stuff is translated into Spanish and is presented in English, as well as if the person that cannot speak English come into the WIC department, perfect example, they have people there that address that. If we look at the population of Plainfield, it's about 40% is Spanish. Yeah, so we to have to be very sensitive to that, and Mr. West, I know, have talked to me about the, just what you're saying, training and getting people more sensitive, and I'm sure that both of them made notes and will take that place. And they come back in the future, say three months from now, and tell us how you're doing with it, okay? Um, I guess I would like you are making a promise to me that you in three months are going to come back and the whole Hispanic community and Plainfield is going to be. No, I don't say that. I say they're going to tell us how they're doing. I wish that was true. I wish that was true. But they will report back and say, we have done this much to take into consideration Ms. Gonzalez's comments. And here's where I think we stand, and this is what we're going to do in the future. What was that again? I said, they're here, so maybe... That's what I'm telling them. They're doing it, and they shake their head. I mean, Mr. <laughs> Ron West and Mr. Smiley gave me a nice smile. Well, I, I guess I only have 10 more minutes. <laughs> um, yeah. No, no, no. Her time is up. Thank you no, very much. No, her time is not up. You took half of her time. Yes, I would say. I guess I have one more point, a quick look point. Yes, and go the ahead. The quick point is, I also would appreciate if uh, any day and in the near future, you're going to have a comment for the bilingual day care. I want our community, the, the Hispanic community, be present. And any single comment that talking about the bilingual day care of the Hispanic community. And I think in this organization, this administration is very friendly with our, with our community, the Hispanic community. And I also beg you that any time that you want something to deal with, with us, don't do it in a bag. Then just please let us know and whatever we can do to help you, we will do it. Thank you. Very cool. Anyone else? To comment? This is the Gus Lottie. Hey, We're sitting here. You got two. Out anything. Yes, sir. We got two. At least two coming up. Yes, this is Peggy. <coughs> I would like to back to our up on our comments because we had an experience in our building where a new family moved in and unfortunately they brought um, some roaches with them. And I called the, the city and they had no information in Spanish. But it turned out that this particular family spoke an indigenous language of, from, I think, Guatemala. So I had researched and gone to the University of Austin and gotten, you know, the information, but it, it, it didn't really, um, it didn't really help this particular individual out. But there's also um, West Africans here who speak Igbo. I was told once by a principal at Evergreen that that language is spoken at home, and the schools are mandated to give all information in languages spoken at home. And I know you can't accommodate all 23 countries, and each country may have 10 or 12 dialects, but if there's a sensitivity to know that not everybody, you can't correspond one and one with everyone in English, and maybe have patience and learn how you could communicate that, that that's part of your 
your proposal to um, be user friendly. Thank you, Mr. Packey, uh, and they have noted, I'm sure. Yeah, there, there's a service that we would be able to yeah. actually access to that. It, mm -hmm. it does uh, not only other languages, but dialects. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We do it at the court. Yeah. You do it at the court. Yeah, you do it all over. Yes, sir. Uh, Frank and Margaret, uh, I'm actually quite a free. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, well, I'll put you back on what she was talking about. We live in a bi bilingual world. All of us got different languages. And I feel like in the city of Plainfield, two issues. All of us should learn all languages to be able to go anywhere in the world. I think that you know, Plainfield should be an orphanage to all children. I also feel as though when you garbage cans in this town, short and feeble. You know? You I see people driving and driving in the trash in different people's neighborhoods. That's all y'all out of hoods. Hood, new neighborhood, y'all. So it should be a garbage kid or more pregnant than any corner. You know? Why not? The corner belongs to the city. The corner belongs to the city. The corner don't belong to the, to, to, to the bridge that owns the house. It belongs to the city. It should be a garbage kid right like when I get there. Because more people are going to get their garbage. Those that don't happen to have a bag with you, <laughs> but that's your neighborhood. And then you tell them, no, man, don't, don't be dropping that trash in my car, in my oh, floor. Most people don't want to carry the trash in the soda can, whatever the case may be. They don't want to carry it all the way until they find a garbage can. You know what I'm saying? And they make that, they, they use the effort. Because you don't want the folks to do it to yourself. And you use that word. You know? Thank you. Thank you. There will be some action taken by a member of the council who would like to address some of the issues of people throwing trash around and so forth and so on. But I would suggest adding the garbage cans to every corner. That's the PUA's responsibility, and that's a lot of money. We've got to figure out a way to help them with that cut that cost as well. Uh, but on our website, if people look at it in the literature, this is your city. Help us keep it clean. Maybe a nice little slogan to put on it or something of that nature. I'm not sure if you can change people's attitudes or that type of thing. Anyone else would like to address us? Okay. Ms. Gonzalez, may I suggest that when you get a piece of literature or you're creating you may want to volunteer to help translate, uh, help uh, the administration in that effort to uh, do that if they request it. I'm not sure if they need it or not. Well, we also, uh, thank you, and we have a big community, and I heard what you say about the translation, international translation, that's sometimes not good. Uh, but uh, we have people that could, um, we have people from the, from the same, uh, from the same part or that, that they speak good English and Spanish. Thank you. Anyone else would like to address us? And, uh, comments from Ms. Freeze? No. Ms. Williams? Um, I just want to thank the public for coming out. I want to thank the CBAC folks for coming out as well. Um, you all need to do something else, but we, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you. And then you, go ahead. No, I'm finished. You want to close? Motion. Motion to close. Second. All in agreement? Ah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, folks. Thank you. 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 Thank you.